Do you think anything is possible inside of Sin City, Las Vegas? I believe what God is doing is that he's bringing people together under the spirit of unity to display that anything and everything is possible through him. This is Las Vegas United. Well, hello, everyone, and I want to welcome you to Las Vegas United. My name is Dada. I have the pleasure of being your host. And so with that being said, if we want to thank you for watching on Keen 17, also, too, on YouTube. And if you are watching on YouTube, can you do me a huge favor? Can you go ahead and hit that like button for me really fast and then hit subscribe? We want to make sure that you receive everything that we're putting out because we're doing things for the kingdom of God, and we don't want you to miss any aspect of it. And speaking of movements of kingdom of, of, kingdom of God, God and not missing any movements. I have two guests with me today, two men of God with me today that are, that are they are laboring inside of this city. And so I'm super excited to, in, to introduce to all of us today, uh, Pastor Elvin from Champion Center and also to Pastor Jose from Victory Outreach Las Vegas. Get mad, gentlemen, welcome to Las Vegas United. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Thank appreciate you. you having us. Thank you so much. No, it's absolutely. It's an honor to be here, really. Oh, is. man. Oh, man, glad you guys are able to make it. And so so here's the part. I want the people to know who you are as a man, right, as a family, a husband, grandkids. If, you, if you're like, I'm not old enough to have grandkids, whatever it looks like for you, right? Because it's important, I believe, right, uh, to understand who the man is that God has called, right? So... Mm -hmm. Well, thank you. Yeah, I, I appreciate that. I think uh, the most important thing that we do, um, you know, is, is fathers, is husbands. I think that's the, um, you know, even beyond the ministry, obviously that's our first ministry. Absolutely. So uh, I am, uh, I'm, I'm blessed. I'm honored. Uh, been married, actually, I've uh, been married to my wife, Sabrina, for 28 years. Come on, man. Yeah, just, Come on, pound now, yeah, boy. Yeah. Come just, on just, now. Uh, just made it uh, <laughs> this this past weekend. We, uh, uh. we celebrated that. So uh, I was able to uh, convince her to preach this mm. weekend. So, oh, for Mother's know, Day. For Mother's Day. Yeah. So we, we got married on Mother's Day. So it all kind of lined up the same way. Oh, but, you put it to work on the anniversary. I, oh, I did. Man. I did, and I got away with it. Right? I got away with it. Don't tell her. She, she, uh, you know. Uh, Don't worry about. I put my wife to work on Mother's Day too. <laughs> but uh, no, we uh, we've been married 28 years. Mm. Uh, have three uh, just amazing, gifted. Uh, called kids. Mm. Uh, my daughter uh, is 19. Uh, she just finished her first year at Grand Canyon University. Come on now. Yeah, she's majoring in forensic psychology. Ooh. So she's, That's a brilliant mind. Hey, she told me that. I said, I don't know what it is, but it sounds like it's good. So, <laughs> um, I have a 17-year-old son mm -hmm. who is a, uh, he's a graphic design uh, just savant. He's just amazing. Mm -hmm. uh, professional level already. He attends mm -hmm. Uh, Las Vegas Academy, oh, nice. um, but already has his professional certifications in a lot of different areas. Did all uh, of the design work in our new uh, church location. Did our logo, graphics, everything. Yes, I, I've seen. He did all that. He did all of that. Ooh, that's and some good so, work, man. Yeah, yeah. That's in-house work, too. That's, that's, good. that's, yeah, that's yeah, even better. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, my, my youngest is uh, getting ready to be 15 here in a couple of weeks. And uh, he is uh, getting ready to go into his sophomore year. Uh, just an amazing, brilliant, talented young man, uh, artistic. And uh, he is just, uh, wow, he, he's, he's everything. So uh, God has blessed me with those, mm. uh, with those three. And uh, haven't gotten to the, to the grandkids stage yet. Okay. But uh, my friend, Pastor Jose, he, he's, <laughs> he, he's, he's taking that, uh, that mantle up for us Grandpa. right now. Well, uh, yes, uh, absolutely. Uh, uh, two grandpas, we're here sitting here together. Come on, pound out on the grandpa. Hey, man, Come on now, uh, lineage. Yeah. <laughs> so, Pastor Jose from Victory Outreach, let everybody know who you are as a man, father, and also two grandfather. Come on now. Hey, Amen. Uh, thank you, man, for letting us be here. Mm -hmm. And it's a privilege to be here. Um, my name is Jose, Pastor Jose, right there at uh, Victory Outreach, North Las Vegas. Mm -hmm. I'm married with my wife uh, for uh, 19 years. Oh, come on. Man. You know, I have uh, four kids. My daughter, she's the uh, worship leader. She plays the piano. Mm. And then also I have my son. Uh, he's uh, 15. He's in the sound system, the cameras. And then uh, my younger son, he's uh, 14. He's in the choir and you know, in the worship. And then my younger daughter, she's 10 years old. She's still too young. But uh, 
All four of them love Jesus. They love to serve in church. Come on, man. Uh, I always remind them that we're a team, and God had called all of us, you know, to the ministry. So uh, I'm blessed to have nice kids, you know, that love church. Mm -hmm. And then um, I come from East L.A. I grew up in East L.A. Uh And um, a big church in East L.A. And I had the calling. uh, God put the calling in my heart to come Mm -hmm. to Vegas and start a Spanish church. Our ministry, uh, we... um, Focus in uh, rehab centers. Mm. You know, our church has a rehab home for men yes. and for women. You know, if somebody's um, in need for a men's home or women's home, it's free. Right. So that's what we dedicate ourselves to. Uh, that's one of our um, passions, uh, the outreach to mm. us uh, in the streets and reach those hurting people, the, the outcasts, right. you know, drug addicts, alcoholics. Mm-hmm. So uh, I don't come from that background, but mm. God calls me, you know, to... He really put that calling on my life to reach those type of people. Mm-hmm. We call them treasure out of darkness. Ooh. So we're say here. That, you, you guys call, say it one more time. Treasures out of darkness. Come on, man. Wow. Those men that nobody cared for them, you know, mm-hmm. homeless, drug addicts, you know, and we see them like treasures, like God sees them because mm-hmm. Jesus died for them too. And, yes. you know, so that's our ministry over 55 years, mm-hmm. uh, you know, going all over all over the world, Victory mm-hmm. Outreach. So uh, we're here in North Las Vegas partnering with Pastor Hayes. It's been a great time, you know, sharing the building with him. Mm-hmm. Amen. So, beautiful building, too. Yeah. Thank you. Thank yeah. You. Yeah, it's beautiful building, man. Beautiful building. So let's talk. You guys, both of you guys said something. You said something. I want to I wanna kind of touch on that because you guys, amazing men, obviously family men, right? You guys are raising your child up, right, in the way of the Lord so they never depart from it, right? And even if they did, it's like, hey, no matter what, you still got that seed in your heart to go ahead and come right on back to the house, right? Amen. And you guys, as fathers, be sitting there like, come on, come on, I'm, I'm right here, right? But the calling. The calling. The call. How? When did the call come? And then, how did you answer? Because everybody's answer is different, right? Everybody's call is different. How did the Lord call you? Wow, um, it's interesting that you uh, that you asked that question because I was speaking with our, our, our youth director the other day, mm-hmm. and we were talking about the importance of youth in summer camps, mm-hmm. and uh, one of my first really major God encounters mm-hmm. was at a youth camp. Mm-hmm. And, um, but prior to that, you know, sometimes we fight with our call. We struggle mm-hmm. with our call. Is it really me? Is, you know, there's so many other people that are more qualified. And, and I kind of, you know, even now, I, I, <laughs> there's times I'm thinking to myself, like, God, are you sure? <laughs> you know, are, are, are you absolutely sure? I mean, I, and, um, you know, we kind of have that surprise that yeah. we, that we're that we're doing what God's called us to do. Right. But when you talk to people around you or people that grew up around you, sometimes I I go to my my buddies. I have a buddy of mine from junior high. I was talking to him. I was like, man, are, can you believe I'm actually this is I'm actually doing this? And he's like, yeah, of course. I'm like, what do you mean? He's like, well, you know, you always used to talk about this. And I'm like, I, I, I did really. Right. And so it wasn't a surprise to him. It's probably, you know, it's more of a surprise to me. Mm-hmm. But, um, you know, I, I grew up in, um, you know, I guess when, when the call really started cementing, when I started getting older, uh, my grandmother, uh, I come from generations. Mm. I mean, deep, like three, four generations, pastors, preachers, uh, prophets, all of that. Mm-hmm. And uh, I was always told, my grandmother, great grandmother, always tell me, hey, you're going to be in the ministry, you're going to mm-hmm. be in the ministry, you're going to be in the ministry. And so when, you know, when that kind of came about, it was like, wow, you know, mm-hmm. it, it's, it, it's, it's, it's coming to pass. Right. But I thought, okay, well, you know, I'm just going to become a deacon. That, that, that'll, that'll scratch that itch. That'll be right. And, um, you know, I, I would do it, but then all of a sudden, you know, I'd be listening to the pastor preach and I'd be like, oh, that was good. But if I was doing it. I would, you know, and and I, I just kind of started, but my, my pastor, got, he, he's gone on to be with the Lord now. Mm-hmm. He would always just kind of watch me and say, hey, you know, you're, you're thinking about this. Or you're, God's putting on your heart to be a minister. And it's like, how'd you know? How'd you know? And, mm-hmm. and so it just kind of came up that way. Um, one of the things that I think really stood out to me as far as knowing that God was in my calling was the fact that I, um, I grew up, um, I guess the churches I had been in 
were very, uh, the, the pastors were very, very um, just high, like high, high, high energy, just mm-hmm. a lot of, you know, singing and, and that wasn't me. Mm-hmm. And uh, I remember thinking, you know, God, like, you know, if, if you need me to sing, I'm not the one. I'm not the one. Yeah. <laughs> you know, if you need me to, I, I, I can't, I can't really shout. I can't scream. I, you know, if, if you need all, I, I can't, I, and that's not me. And uh, I'll never forget, uh, there was a day that my, my, my pastor was sick and uh, the substitute uh, pastor that came by, a guy named Dr. France Brown, mm-hmm. Dr. Brown got up there, he opened up his Bible and stood in place and literally just went down through the scripture. Just, I mean, just bow, like just illuminated. Mm-hmm. And it's like, wow, closed his Bible and sat down. I was like, wow, now that I can do if, if you if you let me do that. Um, and so um, because I, I kind of grew up or have that mentality uh, in my just the desire because mm. I really want to help people. Mm. I don't want to hype them. Come on. Uh, I, I don't want them to to get all excited. And and, and I, now I want you to walk away with, OK, I'm 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 I'm. I'm struggling. Oh, I'm, I'm, that, that's helping. Let, let me think about that. Let me, let right. me apply that. Let right. me. I, I want people to walk away with that. Right. With practicality. With mm. with with something I can use in my Monday through Saturday life, right, and, right, and right. not just you know adrenaline boost. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Way beyond a, a spiritual pep rally. Come on now. So, um, so yeah, that that's kind of my calling and and. and Summary. Come on, man. I love it. Yeah. I love it. I love it. You kind of touched on the call, on your call, like how you answer the call. Like, how did you know? Like, it was like, cause like, kind of like Pastor Elder is like, hey, like, I had the itch. I was like, well, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm gonna just scratch the surface of it. I mean, it's kind of like the, it's kind of like, oh, okay, yeah, I'm good. <laughs> but it was like, no, it got deeper and yeah. deeper and deeper to where there was like, no, I actually, this is so deep that the only person that can scratch it is the Lord. Right. So like, so like, so like for you, how did, what did that call look like for you? And then how did you answer? Um, well, we come from Mexico, my family, mm-hmm. and we come looking for the American dream, you know, and that's what my mom, and my parents wanted for us. Mm-hmm. And so they raised up us in church here in, um, in East LA. Mm-hmm. And, um, I did fulfill that American dream. Mm-hmm. I had my house. I got married with a, a girl from church, you know. And um, I was part of the leadership, the pastoral team in church. Mm-hmm. It's a church over 700 people there in uh, East L.A. Uh, we had our own house. I had my own car, brand new car, Mustang, you know, living the life, being a leader from church. Mm-hmm. And then I started um, working with the cell groups, and I ended up with a, with about seven, eight cell groups under me. Mm. So my thought, you know, I thought I was going to become an evangelist. Mm. But the Bible says that the thoughts of the Lord are greater than ours, you know. So um, mm-hmm. I thought I was going to become an evangelist. But when my pastor saw that I was building, like, Bible studies and overseeing them and, you know, so he said, um, you know, I think God has a calling for you for mm-hmm. becoming a pastor. Mm-hmm. And then I got a confirmation from other leaders in church. And one day I was washing my car, my Mustang, you know, I had my house, I had money, everything I wanted, you know. I made my parents proud, you know, mm-hmm. but I... That day I was washing my car and I told the Lord, Lord, I wasn't born for this. Mm. I think I'm, I was born for something bigger. Mm. Some, I, you know, I want to do more for you. Mm-hmm. You know, I know I already made my parents proud, but I want to make you proud, you mm-hmm. know. So, um, and I, God broke me, you know, and he said, um, are you willing to leave everything mm-hmm. to answer the call? You wow. know, because I have a calling for you. Right. And I was washing my car, my rims, my car, and I was started broken. And I told God, I, I'm willing to leave everything. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, because I know that all that that I had, mm-hmm. it wouldn't fulfill me, you know. Right. I wasn't satisfied. Mm-hmm. So I told the pastor, Pastor, I think I'm ready to answer the call. You know, I know God ca- has called me to pastor. Mm-hmm. So they, um, I had to sell my house, sold my house. I didn't have to. I just did it willingly. Mm-hmm. You know, me and my wife, and I love my wife because she's down for everything that I'm that God has called me to. It, it, you know, it's, it's it really is a like yeah. for our wives, yeah. being like being pastors for our wives. They're not like just a pastor's wife. No, they're like they're our wives, and they're they 
they when we say yes, they say yes. Yeah. And sometimes they're like, Lord, I trust you. <laughs> this man, I trust you, right? But you think the prayer, the prayer, the prayer warrior we have. Yeah. Like you said, your wife was down. Mm-hmm. I love that. Keep going, man. Yeah, cause she had a good job. She mm-hmm. used to work at a Cedar Sinai Medical Hospital mm-hmm. in Beverly Hills. You know, so she she made good money. Me too. And I had to leave my job. She had to leave her job, and then they trained us for three years. Mm-hmm. You know, we were full time ministry, not getting paid. You know, and so that's a humbling experience we experienced. And that apartment we had to live in, you know, uh, with my kids, newborn kids, two newborn kids. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's where God really humbled us because we Mm -hmm. never lived in a a situation like that. Because even the team that we were uh, were going to send with us to Vegas, Mm -hmm. they were living with us, you know. So um, it was a great experience. We we learned a lot, you know, me and my wife. So I thank God that she always said yes, you know, Mm -hmm. everything. She had to quit her job. She was working for 20 years there at at Cedar Sinai, and um, so uh, we answered the call, and then they sent us here 10 years ago, mm. and we started um, there in North Las Vegas, uh-huh. and um, and I thank God, you know, now that I said yes, I don't regret it. It hasn't been easy, you know, we had shed tears. There's times where we say, man, how am I going to pay the rent? Because first it's our church rent, you know, and then it comes our personal bills and all that. That's mm. how I feel, you know. Mm. I'm... Uh, you know, because I know that the people are trusting in us, you know. Yes. And so we always have to be up there preaching faith. And, you know, even though we're struggling sometimes, but Ooh. it's not easy. But before I used to have all the money, have money and cars mm-hmm. and everything. And maybe right now I don't have all that, but I, I have peace. I have mm-hmm. contentment in my life. Yeah. Now I love what I do, helping people. And my reward, my paycheck is seeing people get saved, you know, right. pe- seeing people families you know get restored that, that's my paycheck mm-hmm. that's my reward you know yeah. and i'm just now i know that i'm you know making god proud you know and and this is what i live for now yeah know? no absolutely i love i love what you say like hey you gotta operate by faith right Amen. even when everything is like is not going well at all right yeah. uh, i have found this definition of faith i want to share it with us uh, taking seriously the obligation that god has placed on himself to accomplish on our behalf Wow. Hmm. Right. Wow. And so you think, you're like, all I had was taking, I had to take God in his word. Yeah. I had to take it seriously that he was what, that he was going to come through for me while I'm doing this yeah. on his behalf. Right. Yeah. I, he's called me to do this right here. I'm going to do it. But Lord, I still need you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. I, I, I still need for you to show up. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it's, it is rough. Right. Because. You know, as pastors, right, the first thing that we do, we're like, okay, people are looking to make sure that you have a building to come to. The lights are on. Water is running, right? You have a place to come park your car, right? Like, I have all that. They're looking for that. And you think as as pastors, we're like, okay, I'm not just managing my house, Mm -hmm. but I'm also managing a responsibility that the Lord has given me to do this in a privileged way, right? Not saying I'm, I'm entitled to it, but it's like I have the privilege yeah. to serve you. I have the privilege to pour into your people, right? So let's talk about pouring into the people for a moment. Like coming to Champion Center, right? What would a person expect to receive on a Sunday? You guys have, do you guys have Bible studies too as well? Yeah, we so have um, anything. So we um, on the weekends we um, we have two services mm-hmm. uh, at CCLV. Mm-hmm. We uh, we have a nine o'clock service, mm-hmm. and that is on the east side. Mm-hmm. Uh, there we meet uh, at thirty nine hundred East Bonanza, mm-hmm. inside of what is uh, Mater East Academy, mm-hmm. I think it is. Uh, but we uh, meet there on Sundays at nine a.m. Mm-hmm. And then our our our, our new or headquarters kind of location mm-hmm. is at thirty six ninety North Rancho, mm-hmm. uh, CCLV North, and uh, that's the, the the space that we we share with Pastor right, right. Jose and Victory. Uh, two churches, one Jesus. Mm-hmm. Woo! Come on, man! <laughs> two churches, one Jesus, one culture. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. Um, but you know, one of the things I think that um, that every single church, I believe has an idea of what they think they are. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. 
And so it always means more when I hear it from others, mm. from the people that come to visit, the people that maybe come to speak. Right. And one of the things that um, is consistent that I get beyond like every single time, any single person that's ever come, mm. is that you guys are the most friendly, mm. relatable people we've ever seen, we've come ever on. met. That's so good. And uh, I thought, wow. Because I remember even before I was, uh, when, when I was just a candidate for the church, and I would come down, and, and nobody, I was just kind of coming to see. And I remember looking at the church. I remember experiencing that friendliness. Mm. I remember seeing the diversity. Mm. I mean, we are an extremely diverse group of people. Mm. And I remember sitting there saying, man, this is what heaven must look like. Come on. This is what, I mean, every... We've got people from the island. I mean, you name it, we've got it in right, the church. Right, 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 right. And so, uh, and, and that's kind of one of the things that we really uh, push into. Mm -hmm. uh, we really believe that uh, that CCLB is a place where diversity is celebrated, mm. hope is activated, and God's presence is elevated. Come on. So um, that's good. Say that one more time. For people. Say that one more time for them. But I, I need the people to catch that on that one. All right. Yes. Our, our, our diversity, our culture, all of that is celebrated. I mean, mm. we really push into that. Mm. Um, so our, our diversity is celebrated. Hope is activated. Mm -hmm. um, you know, again, living in the world that we're in, uh, there, there's. Uh, I was just listening to so many things of, of what happens when your hope is gone like yes. like when you get to a place where you've lost all hope mm -hmm. and so every single week i mean we have the privilege we have the honor we have the 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 opportunity to tell the greatest story in the world every single week yes. we have the opportunity to yes. talk about jesus to talk about his death his burial his resurrection him overcoming we get the opportunity every single week right to do that come on and so that you talk about just activating that hope, regardless of what situation mm. a person's in. Yeah. We can see and, 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 and know and understand with faith mm. that Christ <laughs> overcame the grave. Ooh. He can help you overcome whatever situation is. So activating that hope. Mm. And finally, uh, again, we said God's presence um, is, 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 is elevated. Mm. And what that means is, is you know, we all have... Uh, uh, programs, or we all have plans. You know, we're we're going to sing this song today. We're going to read this. You know, and, and we'll lay it all out, and we'll you know prayerfully. We'll we would have gotten all of that. Right. But at any time, at any time in the service, um, when God speaks, when the Holy Spirit says, <laughs> "Now it's my time," we'll we'll, we'll toss that paper aside. We'll go toss that plan aside. Say so planning center is out of the window. Planning center, yeah, exactly. Yeah, we, yeah, we put it in. The pastors know. know what I'm talking about with the planning center. Yeah, exactly, exactly. But uh, you know, th that's the most uh, th the most important uh, moment that we can have mm -hmm. is a moment at which God says, "Okay, that's great what you guys had planned, but now let me come in and and do my thing." So we always elevate mm -hmm. the presence of God, always pursuing Him, um, and so. Um, yeah, it's great if we if we get an opportunity to to preach or but you know what if we don't and we just worship that's okay mm. if that's what God wants us to Absolutely. do that day. No, so, so we good. really really just elevate, try to elevate uh, the presence of God uh, in, through our worship, just mm -hmm. the practicality of God through our teaching. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, that, that yeah. that's what someone would hopefully expect yeah. uh, when they walk through the doors of CCLB. No, I love it. I love it. You, when you were talking, you made me think about, well, I think it was, uh, I think it's Proverbs 16, 1, where it talks about that the preparations of the heart is of the man, mm -hmm. but then the word yeah. the, from the mouth is from mm -hmm. the Lord. Yeah. Man. Right? So it's like one of those, this, our, yeah, we plan. Yeah. But to give God the final say, yeah. that's the key. So I, yeah. I love that. I love that. I love that. So, Pastor Jose, so when, if somebody comes to Victory Outreach North Las Vegas, what would what would they encounter? Um, an atmosphere of family. Like, mm. we want to make them feel like we're a, a family, you mm. know? That's a, a atmosphere we want to create because we deal a lot with broken families, mm. you know, outcasts, like, uh, people that have been rejected, you mm -hmm. know, so um, we make them feel family, you know, that part of the family. Yeah. And then once they become like they feel part of the family, we try to connect them, you know, to 
to different ministries in, in church and then to the Bible studies, mm -hmm. you know, and then um, and from there, we we like to um, work, you know, we may put them to work. Yeah. yeah you know, yeah. the Great Commission to go out there and make disciples to all nations. So mm -hmm. that's uh, our um, culture, our vision, you know, mm -hmm. to reach, you know, um, the lost, you know, so um, we have a lot of uh, outreach, you mm -hmm. know, we have evangelism and door to door, right. you know, all that. So. Um, we really believe in, um, in that um, the calling of God that had placed in our lives mm -hmm. to, to fulfill the, the Great Commission, you yeah. know, and, and we train them, you know, and they, they, um, they, they get uh, like addicted to it, you know, mm. just seeing people get saved in the streets. Not too long ago, like about three weeks ago, we had a, a rally. We caught it a rally up in the middle of the apartments. God gave us favor. They gave us permit to sit our our boots there, our stage and uh, music and all that stuff. We had toys for the kids. Wow. It's a really um, low income, you know, inner city, you know, mm -hmm. apartments and all that, you know. So w once I met, everybody was happy eating and getting toys for the kids and all that. But once I called everybody to try, so I could pray for them, mm -hmm. you know, even the church, we pray for them. And, and it was something I have never experienced where be, even before I started praying for them, People were crying, mm, you know, yeah. broken moms, you know, that mm. I know they've been through a lot, you know, with their kids and situations in their house. And we could just see the presence of the Lord there in the middle yeah. of the apartments. And and then I pray for little kids, you know, that I know that they've been hurt, you know, at mm. their age. Mm. And their parents were broken as I was praying for little kids. Mm. And it was like about 100 kids, you know, mm. parents just, um, you know, and and so people see that, you know, people that come to a church, newcomers, mm. they come and see that. So they they love that. So they want to do that. They right. they, you know, it's something that we cannot, you know, like nobody could pay us to, mm. you know, to do yeah. something like that. You know, it just we're just grateful for what God did in us, and you know, we just trying to every Sunday let them know that we trust in them, not only God but us as pastors. You yeah. know, we trust in you, and we believe in you that you got it has a calling for them too. Yeah. So. No, so good, I, and I love what you're saying. Hey, we we want to go out, and it's in your name. Yeah, outreach, yeah, outreach. right? You're you're going out to reach the ones that's broken, the ones that are you know far away, the ones that nobody nobody yeah. wants to deal with, right? And I love what you were saying too. Like, hey, man, we we come to you know what I'm saying activate and and motivate and, and el elevate, uh, elevate. Yeah. yeah. And I'm like, uh, I was just thinking, I was like, man, you want everybody to champion, yeah every moment in their lives based on what God wants, right? Mm -hmm. And so you think, I love what you guys are doing here. Well, I, I think, you know, going back, to, as I've, I'm looking at the, the title mm -hmm. of, of, of this program, you know, Las Vegas United, that's mm -hmm. why I felt it was so important. Um, you know, we are living uh, the demonstration of the fact of, mm -hmm. of, of what kingdom is really all about. Come on now. Um, you know, I think it's too often that there's competition mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. among the church world. Mm -hmm. um, or really, when it comes to kingdom work, it shouldn't be a competition. It should be completion. Come on. And so, um, you know, we've just been blessed. Uh, to, and as you were talking about outreach, I was just thinking about how, you know, we've been blessed just from learning mm. uh, uh, from them. And, 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 and hopefully we've been pouring into them and, and they've been learning from us and, right, right, right. and, and, and our iron sharpening iron, mm -hmm. uh, so to speak. But, uh, you know, we really, you know, one of the things that is even on our calendars for the upcoming week here is just for us to sit down and, and like, hey, let's really plan mm -hmm. what are we going to do together. Uh, mm -hmm. One of the things that we are uh, doing is um, at the beginning of June, uh, I think June 3rd through the 7th, mm -hmm. if I'm not mistaken, oh, we're doing Vacation Bible School, mm -hmm. uh, doing it together. Nice. Uh, vacation Bible School, we're, we've actually got a sponsor, so it's completely free. I hope y'all hear that. that <laughs> a free VBS. Free VBS. Come on. <laughs> uh, you, your, your kids aren't going to get this at the YMCA or sit in front of the TV or mm -hmm. anything like that. Uh, but absolutely free. You just yes. need to register. Uh, you can go online to cclvchurch.com is mm -hmm. our is our website that you can register there. But um, you know, just partnering mm -hmm. uh, in, in moves like that, uh, we do two significant outreaches at the church: mm -hmm. uh, one fall festival, another springtime mm -hmm. uh, that we've partnered together with. We're looking to do other things as right. we actually get out and go more door to door. We 
uh, we, we, we moved, uh, and again, ministered together during the Super Bowl. We mm-hmm. went down and walked the grounds mm-hmm. of the uh, uh, stadium and just prayed for. So we've done a lot of things right. uh, united. Uh, but we're looking to do a whole lot more. Yeah, no, absolutely. Mm-hmm. So here's a question because we, uh, we're we closing up the show here. But here's a question for you. Yeah. How can, I want to start with you, Pastor, is how can uh, a person connect and get to learn more about Victory Outreach North Las Vegas? You guys have a website or something that people that someone can go to and, and look up service times and everything like that? Yeah, we do. Um, we have a website, at, uh, Alcance Victoria, mm-hmm. North Las Vegas. Uh, dot com and then we also have a phone number where you could reach us at any time um, 562-309-5998 mm-hmm. and we have a uh, homes you know rehab centers mm-hmm. for uh, anybody's looking for a rehab center for your family members for your son or somebody's uh, you know um, addicted with drugs alcohol you don't know what to do with them you know call us you know and we uh, God has you know Place that calling upon our lives to reach those type of people, and we could help, you know. Yeah. And we could go and counsel people, you know. We have a rehab centers for men and women, mm. you know, so it's totally free. Right. And most of our leaders, most of our pastors, they come out of there mm. of the rehab centers. Nice. So we're here to help, you know, and um, you could uh, contact us. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Praise the Lord for that, man. Pastor Elvin, how can someone learn about? Champion Center and also two service times. Is it you guys have a website? Yeah, or, you know? uh, we are on. Uh, we're on Facebook. Mm-hmm. Uh, we are on YouTube, mm-hmm. uh, CCLV Church, mm-hmm. uh, on Instagram mm-hmm. as well, um, and uh, again our website cclvchurch.com. Mm-hmm. Uh, service times nine a.m. Uh, over on the east side, and eleven a.m. Mm-hmm. Uh, at our uh, North Campus. One of the things on Wednesday nights, you asked about Bible study yes. earlier. Uh, we do a Bible study on Wednesday nights. Mm-hmm. It's kind of our family night. Mm-hmm. Our youth meets that night as well. Kids uh, meet that night. But on Wednesday nights, mm-hmm. one of the things that we've been doing here recently is um, the, uh, the the kind of the hit series, The Chosen. Uh, uh-huh. uh, we've been sitting down with our congregation and watching an episode of The Chosen mm-hmm. And then going to the scripture and saying, okay, this is what we saw, Mm. but this is what actually happened. Mm. And so uh, using that as a vehicle to really help people learn how to navigate Mm -hmm. the word, how to really get into it and say, okay, we'll see that. Don't base your life on that because that's nowhere in the scripture. Mm -hmm. But this part, this is it right Mm. here. So just helping... uh, helping people uh, to do that. So we've been doing that on Wednesday nights at nice. six o'clock. And Come on, that's been a huge, a huge hit. People that have been following God for a long time said, man, said, I'm on, this thing has just got me on fire. Like, mm. I can't wait to get here on Wednesday night. Come on. So, so good. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Well, Pastor, Pastor Elvin, Pastor Jose, thank well, you guys thank you. for coming up on Las Vegas United and sharing your hearts. And so here's the bill. We want to thank you guys for tuning in to Las Vegas United tonight. Other than that, you guys have a blessed week. We'll catch you guys on the next episode.